Hello, my name is Grant Fritchie. I work for Redgate Software. Hey, let's talk about the query store. Nah, instead, let's talk about missing indexes. Nah, instead, let's talk about both. Let's talk about how the fact is, is that the missing index DMVs inside of SQL Server are, what's a good word, useless. They are useless. They do not give you one vital piece of information that is completely important, that is completely irreplaceable in determining whether or not a suggested, and these are suggestions, a suggested missing index is going to be helpful to you. And what is that one piece of information that you must have for a missing index to be useful? Which query is it for? The DMVs do not connect in any regard to queries. You cannot say for this missing index in the, in the missing index DMVs, get me this query. No way to get that done. There is one way to get that done, and that is to look at the missing index information inside of execution plans. And so I've got a query here that will walk you through pulling that information from the query store. Let's go explore it. Right, so what we have is a query. I'm going to be using XML inside of execution plans to retrieve the missing index information from Query Store. It's fairly straightforward. X, the X query is probably not all that straightforward, but, but the process is very straightforward. So first up, I'm going to get my XML namespaces based off, the, off of the, the URL necessary. I'm going to be using a CTE to set that up, nice and simple. Now let's move down to the from clause. Um, from query store query, from query store text, so I can get the text ID, and then I'm joining to a selection of query plans, and I'm casting the query plan as XML, because the query plans inside of query store are stored as text, because XML has a depth limit inside of SQL Server, and so the XML data type can cause problems with query store queries, um, or with execution plans, I should say, and um, if you have to, you know, I'm doing the cast, you might not want to, depending on your situation, but by doing the cast, it comes back as XML, and then I can manipulate it as XML. So that's why I'm doing it here this way. Um, if you are hitting the situation where the XML is too big, you'll have to find other solutions. This won't work for you. Then I'm doing another sub-select where I'm grouping by the plan ID. So what I'm doing is aggregating the aggregates because the information stored in query store is aggregated by hour. So what I'm doing is I'm putting them all together. So I get the sum, the min, the max, the average of the averages so that you know I've got a, a single data set that I'm dealing with. And then I cross apply it to the query plan dot nodes. And that is how we get to the XML. And then the column group dot nodes dot column column group. And so then the select is just a question of going and getting the information I want. How many times is it executed? Min duration, max duration, all that fun stuff. The query plan, and then hit the query plan dot value. Give me the missing index table, schema, the impact, and the column names and column group usage. How is it being put together? And so once I've got all of this together, I can run a query. And the query is going to go and come back, and it's going to find all of the queries divided by plan for a certain number of executions, what was the min duration, the max duration, the average duration, how many reads were involved, the writes, and then I've got the query plan. So I can look at the query plan and say, well, wait a minute, how was this you know, query plan resolved? Oh, it came out looking like this, that's great, cool. So I can then troubleshoot the query plan and decide whether or not this missing index information, which is telling me that I need to add to the sales order header, um, in the sales thing, an inequality on order date with an include of two other columns. This is great stuff because I'm able to take the missing index information and combine it with the query information. So I can say that, well, this was executed one time. Is this missing index information important? Probably not. This was executed 106 times. Is this missing index information important? Yeah, it probably could be. That's where we start to make those separations and figure out what's going on. Not simply take the missing index information and assume it's correct, but instead marry it to a particular object, marry it to a particular execution plan, marry it to a particular query, and then make the evaluation going that way.
Now, don't go away. We're not done. Hit that like. Hit that subscribe. Definitely could use it. Got just one more comment to make. The important thing to understand about missing indexes, and it's very important, they are suggestions. You must validate that this suggestion is useful for your queries. You should never simply take these missing index suggestions and apply them across the board without a thorough and complete and accurate set of testing to ensure that one, it is actually a benefit for the queries you think it will benefit, and two, it is not hurting performance. It's not hurting your situation in some place else. Because every time you add an index, you are also adding some overhead in maintenance um, for inserts, updates, deletes, stuff like that. So indexes are not free. We can't just simply add them willy-nilly wherever we want. You've got to think it through. You've got to validate. These things are suggestions and need to be tested. That's it. Thanks a lot. My name is Grant Fritchie. I work for Redgate Software.